morning everyone so new day new video um, on my own again back to work on my own um, just gonna be working around doing this hazel around there as you can see around the roof and uh, hopefully soon we'll get stone and backfill all around so then I can uh, finish off these walls around all the earth bagging walls around here and then we can tie in those other rafters complete the roof and then eventually we'll get all this roof all done and we can start plastering which I'm keen to do because these earth bags have been uh, exposed to some light for a while now they're, they're not degrading yet they're still well they are degrading but but they're not showing signs of degrading so uh, so we'll see they're still still fine at the minute the UV isn't really that high at the moment it's time of year but yeah it's all looking good so we're gonna carry on putting this hazel around today just on my own and uh, see how much we can get done so uh, the way I've been doing this is uh, I hope you can see there but essentially you just rest the piece on this piece is just done rest the piece on cut it to uh, the right sort of angle so it's sort of following where you want it to follow you screw in the end and then cut the next piece so that electric chainsaws look perfect for this little job you can just stick that in there you know all of this gets covered over with lots of stuff and any any high points that are left I'll uh, just take off any sharp bits with the chainsaw but yeah I'm just going around bit by bit like that So just got done getting a lot of the uh, hazel up and uh, really need to get that support in the middle now because it's rather heavy with long spans as you probably all noticed it's fine it's only got a slight bounce to it when I jump up and down um, but before I put much more weight on it I'd like to get that support in I'm going to use this tree here I think it's quite infected with ash dieback so it's ripe and ready to for the taking to be used and it's got I think a curve that I can use so I'm gonna cut this down and, and see if it'll work out Hello, morning everyone. So, back to it. Just in my normal work boots again. Got rid of the boot now. Still very delicate, so I used a crutch still, but back to work anyway. Nice new boots, very supportive, and done up really nice and tight, so should be alright if I just uh, am careful. So, I'm going to carry on with this job I was at, getting this beam up. So, I started uh, notching them in. Um, we're trying to get it to touch in lots of spots could do with a bit more of a curve to it um, it's very hard to see those things when you're when the trees on the ground but I've got it touching quite a few spots now um, ones that are very close we're gonna get them a little bit closer now um, as you see we've got touching 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 that one's gonna touch touching 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 so it's touching about half the beams at the minute some of them are very close and once the weights on them they'll be right down and some of them where there's a 
slightly bigger gap I'm going to do something creative in there Right, we're getting pretty close to this. Thought I'd just show you a little trick here. So uh, I'm now close, like I've got most of my material out of this notch here that I'm going to be taking out of it. But obviously there's still going to be high points. It's very difficult to determine where they are. So a good trick is this. You get some, uh, some grass and you just put it in there. And what I'm going to do lift it up nice and carefully and oh, sorry I'm not filming lift it up nice and carefully and uh, as it presses on the uh, sorry I'm not keeping the camera right where I want it it's hard and talk so as it you know as it presses on it's going to leave some green stains where we've got high points so I'm going to do that in all of them and then we'll see where the stains are and take them out and we'll get a closer look. okay so grass strands are in there so now I'll take it down and I'll be able to see where is tight, put it back up and we should be pretty close then. You can see I'm... Let's see where we're touching here then. So I can see it's in here. I don't know if you can see that on camera, it's quite, you know, it's not very distinctive, but I can see it's in this area here and that one. better if you can sort of wiggle it around a bit okay there we got this area here you see that this area here is the problem and this one it's this through here you can see this patch here quite distinctive and a tiny bit at the back there as well okay let's get that out and put it back up so I reckon that's good right there so it's touching well in some spots, uh, not so well in some others, but you know, it's a wiggly bit of wood. Um, so we're gonna leave that at that for roughing out. Obviously I'll just smooth them off a bit. Um, but yeah, most a uh, good proportion of them are touching and the others we're gonna do some creative stuff with. So now I need to uh, figure out a way of creating a reference point for what way that is you know, level so that when the posts are mortised and tenoned in, the posts sit down straight. So I need to like screw a bit of wood to it, which is like, you know, screw a piece of wood down or something, which is perfectly level, so that when I take it down and flip it up the other way to put my mortises down through it, I'll know where level is and where we want it. Uh, that piece of wood there is my reference point. So on the back side, it's the reference point that way. On this side, it's the reference point that way. So I'm gonna take it down now and then I can put it on two stands and, and we know in, you know which where it wants to sit so we can get our posts to run directly straight down okay let's just uh, get this uh, just the high spots off now this will um, change our levels the tiniest little bit but not significantly Break these edges so it looks nice and smooth. Still need to uh, complete debarking this. Okay, this side's mostly debarked. Now, I love these little pockets, I think they look awesome, but I'm gonna stick a bit of a uh, treatment in them. Oh. yeah just to uh, make sure that rot doesn't continue once it's dry it'll be fine we'll just stick some of that in there and that'll ensure it doesn't end up rotting on us do you know what I'm just going to uh, treat the whole beam you know they look nice when they're fresh cut like this but it doesn't last long anyway they always darken up so 
might as well considering it's a log that's uh, you know been exposed to some some rot some infection let's give it a bit of treatment let's say it's all going to go dark anyway like it so you ask me why am i treating this bit of wood and not those bits of wood well because this is ash and they're large this is durable this is not so there we go that's why even though it's internal it's not going to be internal for a while so nice to put some treatment on it and yes it is green but it's been drying for a few weeks and um and it, you know the top layer will at least absorb some and those pockets are gonna get some too anyway let's uh move on to our next job get it orientated and and start putting some tenons on some posts I've got this all orientated where i want it based off our reference point now i'm just doing the uh the first flat spot that's going to take the first post which is this one here um so i'm just creating a flat spot so this flat spot here will be level and that means the post will sit level relative to our reference point when it's up there it should do anyway so once i get this flat spot level I can then work off this because this will be my new reference point for what the log is doing. Um, so yeah, just chisel away at this. Hope that makes sense. It's kind of a, it's not that complicated, but maybe a bit difficult to get your head around. It's hard for me when I'm doing it to get my head around it. So, so this is gonna this flat spot here is what the shoulder of the post is going to butt up against and the peg will then squeeze squeeze the post will be a mortise in here and the peg will squeeze the, the shoulder of the post against this flat surface and it will be uh, it will be strong I'm not going to scribe these in it looks nicer doing scribes but they take so long I've got four posts to put on this so I don't really want to do that Okay, I just laid out this log here. It's just going to be our tenon. I'm about to cut out these two bits here. You can see marked off. So taking those two pieces out, and then we'll remark the tenon on the flat surface and get these side pieces afterwards. If you want to see how to do this, I did a video of how I do all this, stringing it all out, laying it all out, creating a center line through the middle of the log, and so on. Uh, I did it. A uh, good explanation of it in. The, uh, one of the uh, shed building videos it's called round how to round wood timber framing i think so if you want to see how that's done go and watch that um there's no point in me going through it all again it's all there so yeah i'm just going to cut along these lines and uh we'll get this tenon cut out And there we go all the way straight away you see what happened there the grain direction went downwards so if I tried to go to the line I'd end up splitting splitting bits out that I didn't want to see that one's going upwards so that one would be fine Just 
gonna knock these edges off just makes them look nicer when they're sitting in the groove okay. so here we go this is what we've done by laying this all out and creating a line through the middle like we did we made a bit of wood that has you know no real you can't put a level on it or anything you know it goes curves all over the place but if you look the tenon is sticking straight up exactly where we want it regardless of these curves <laughs> And just chipping out this mortise here and then we'll get it close enough and we'll do a test fit take forever to do these do way easier to do the tenons morning everyone new day so i got a uh, these two bits stripped, moved and stripped the other day, uh, yesterday, sorry. Um, and so today I'm going to set these out, these two pieces, put two tenons in them, maybe do the mortises too, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to set you up on a time lapse and you can watch me uh, string all these out and put the tenons in them. We've got one tenon done, hope the time lapse came out well, we'll know when we look at it a bit later. Um, so that's the process of doing one of those tenons, takes a long time, uh, creating a straight line through the middle of the log, laying it all out and then making the tenon face in the correct orientation to the bottom. So that's one done, um, I'll do this one now. I just made this little jig just out of some 2x4s, uh, it's just basically a square box and I clamp, clamp the chain mortise into the square box and then I've screwed the square box down into the log and this is all leveled and everything so this is now exactly as it wants to be I've leveled up the blade and everything so now I can move around the chain mortiser relative to the log which is handy so I can get all of that mortise and I can move it backwards and forwards with that and I can get all of it irrespective of uh, the roundness of the log which I think is quite cool very simple so yeah let's uh, more chain mortise this out Right, just got my last mortise done, chain mortiser and jig. So uh, that they just all need um, doing their final fitting and uh, drilled the holes as well, ready for the pegs. So they need to sort it out. Really should drill the holes first before doing the mortise, but I've uh, got to do it, but never mind. So we get that um, disassembled, clean up the chisel and then do test fits and then drive those pegs home and then I've got to fit it and it would be a miracle if it fits up there and actually works because this was actually a complicated thing to, uh, to make. The chain mortise does, does a great job at moving, removing a lot of material but you've always got to tidy up after it. You know, it's just a, quite a beast of a thing really. so you've just got to come in and just give it a little bit of a tidy up at the end. Square off the corners and that. I tend to uh, do the tenon in the log 
and then cut the mortise to the size of the tenon but the mortise for some reason no matter how accurately you measure it is always smaller than the tenon so I then go back and rather than trim down the uh, mortise I uh, go back and trim the tenon because it's easier to change the tenon fit the tenon to the mortise than it is fit the mortise to the tenon so that's the order of doing it's got all sorts of end grain to contend with with the mortise you don't really have that with the tenon so there we go that should be alright Get a rot there, but that doesn't matter. We've put treatment on it now, so it won't continue to spread until it's going to dry up. Okay. Morning, everyone. So the uh, the nice weather has gone. It's a bit wet and soggy out here now, but we're we'll press on anyway. Um, we're going to get these fit properly. I bet they're full of water. Yep. Get all these fit, um, pegged, and then maybe even lift it up. We'll see. All right, let's get to it. All right, you know, got the hole and everything drilled for the peg. I'm gonna ratchet strap this post in now. It's not very nice. It's all muddy out here today. It's no good. But we'll carry on, persist on. So we get this lid in there. Ah, go on. There is the hole offset. I don't know if you can see, but you should be able to. And we drive the peg in now. It's going to pull that real tight against that shoulder. All right, let's get this pegged. Pegs have gone black from the tannins where they've been outside, but that doesn't matter. Hey. Okay. Check it's not blowing out the back. No, it's looking good. Okay, looks nice. Here we fit the rest of them and then we can uh, actually install it. Okay, they're all in, all four posts. Everything looks right. So uh, now I'm just gonna put the tractor bucket back under it, lift it up and see if it fits. Is it going to fit? <laughs> be a miracle if it does. I'll be impressed with myself. Right. Okay, check it out, it's in. Wasn't actually too bad, it's just ratchet strapped to the roof at the moment. Nothing under the posts. So, uh, job here now, let's get tidied up in here. So just an absolute tip. Still like it was before I did my ankle in, but I just wanted to get that in and out of the way. So I can, uh, by the way, if you're wondering why those two posts are a bit further apart than those two, it's because that one needed to be there for the door and I didn't want to move that one, sorry, that one over because i wouldn't be able to get in and out with the tractor so that's why that is and it doesn't really matter so yeah gonna have to put some stones and like a little wall underneath them for it to all sit on and sort out the bottoms and stuff but she's in she's touching in lots of spots where it's not touching we're gonna put in like beach pebble just like notched in that the log can sit on it'll look really quite artistic and cool 
and yeah the joints will look good and the posts will line up so very pleased with how it's turned up turned out so we're going to leave this video here and in the next video we'll be getting uh, tidied up down here probably put some stones under them get it fixed put the pebbles in and uh, just get some more earth bags fitted probably around the around the back wall there and uh, soon enough we're gonna have to start properly finishing the earth bags around so we can finish this roof off and then we can crack on with the roof okay so that's gonna be the end of the video so I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching